I, I wanted to get this one out because it was a mini request from someone. And I thought it would be nice if I fulfilled it. They asked how it is that I went from what I was doing before or whatever um, to editing really low tier movies. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. What sin have you committed as of late? I was driving and I was tired. Don't you ever fucking go there with my daughter again. <laughs> I sure have had a good time. I really am. <laughs> So much money. So much sin. It's true. I edited a movie that a guy shot on his own budget, you know, with his own whatever. <clears throat> a guy who lived down here for years shot on his own dime that was based on a Stephen King story called Mute. And I don't know, I don't know that it's that interesting of a story to be honest, but basically this guy Rob Darren it's not exactly his name, but that's that's his working name. Uh, he shot... He, sh he got a Dollar Baby contract with Stephen King where you give him a dollar and you can adapt a short story to film, but you're very restricted in what you can do with it. By the way, I've made a video about why not to do Stephen King Dollar Baby movies. You might want to go see that. But anyway, he adapted the short story Mute to his own, you know, movie. He, he took some creative liberties with it, and I have to admit, some of his choices were actually pretty interesting. The, um, he was a customer at my computer repair shop, and he had this old Vista PC, and he was using Sony Vegas to edit. He kept having problems. One day, I just happened to ask him, like, you know, hey, well, you know, what are you doing with that? Like, what, do you, what kind of stuff do you edit? Because I had, I had gotten into video for a couple years, um, I had been just plunking around with video, and I wasn't really producing anything significant yet. But I had, um, you know, I had done web commercials, things like that, and this would be the first, like, decently lengthy film, like actual film, that I could edit, and that had someone else's stuff in it. <coughs> so I looked at what he had edited, and immediately I could see a ton of really uh, poor choices that were coming together, poor editing choices, um, problems with the shots, problems with the color, and the problem ultimately is that Rob tried to do everything himself, but he didn't quite know how to do it. Um, video editing properly is very difficult. It's, it's hard to put together a good movie, and I've done a lot of research, I've watched a lot of movies, and I had an understanding of it that was very academically sound because I took a lot of time to understand what is a good or bad choice. I, I cannot tell you how many videos I've watched discussing video, you know, just filmmaking and film editing and um, shot choices, framing, everything. So a lot of it applies to photography too, like the rule of thirds, you know, composition, whatever. So I could see that this guy had a ton of raw footage, had a ton of sound, had a whole solid story, he wrote the screenplay himself and everything. He'd shot it, hired actors, hired some uh, pretty uh, decently sizable names, frankly, out there in Vegas, California, um, and they shot it out there in Las Vegas for the most part. And, and I could see that the editing was really the thing that was killing him. 
and editing is hard. I, I had spent years doing video editing at that point, um, and it was not it was not easy at all. It was actually one of the hardest things I ever did was starting to learn video editing because it can be really difficult to wrap your head around the process when you first start, uh, and it was very intimidating to me. But I had gotten through it, and I'd spent a lot of time working with that stuff, just just examining narratives and and uh, cuts and just and doing a lot of complaining actually. So I looked at Rob's stuff and I was like, hey man, look, would you be willing to like give me a copy of all this stuff? Let me make a copy of it and let me try my hand at editing and see if I can come up with uh, anything that would be helpful. And he's like, sure man, here, just, yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to have somebody else look it over and, and give it a shot. And that's it. I mean, the rest is history. Um, I edited Rob's movie for him. Um, Rob did not sit in on the process at first because it took me a couple days just to get his footage sorted. Um, he had different footage for different scenes, but it was uh, out of order. It was not synchronized, and I spent a ton of time just syncing up his footage roughly to where <clears throat> like footage and sound had to be synced. Um, related clips needed to be closer together. He did way too many shots. He changed things between some shots um, just ad hoc. He didn't really plan it. He just he just changed the things, um, which caused inconsistency, which caused a lot of shots that had bad parts to not be spliceable with other shots that also had bad parts, but the bad parts were mutually exclusive. So it was a pretty heavy-duty challenge. I mean... Today, I know that the best way to refer to something like this is a salvage job. It's like all the work's been done. It's been, you know, shot, sound and video and all that stuff's been shot. The actors are done. It's like they're wrapped. They're done. It's, it's done. And the editing's not going well. And, you know, we need to bang out a good product and we don't have forever to do it. But we can't reshoot the movie. Like there'd be too many reshoots, too much inconsistency. It was shot in Vegas, which is across the country from me in North Carolina. Him, too, at the time. Now he's even further from Vegas, where he lives. <coughs> so, um, I mean, yeah, what, what was he supposed to do, man? It's it pretty rough. Anyway, there was really no way to do any significant amount of extra shooting. So, Rob was in, in a bit of trouble here. I don't know if you saw that, but that guy ran a red light. Anyway, Rob was in a bit of trouble on it with this movie because he had been trying to edit it for a while and it wasn't coming out. And it was because there were a lot of mistakes made during shooting um, and a lot of inconsistencies. And some of the audio was just really bad for some reason. He did he did tell me that um, there were a few things, there were quite a few things he when he came back later and started editing he wasn't happy with. But what could he do? So I spent a long time, I don't even remember at this point how long, a year, over a year, pecking away at it in my spare time. I did a lot more work on it at first, um, when I first got the footage, and then I would just open it every once in a while and work on it a little bit. And what I ended up doing was hammering out what I thought, based on seeing the raw footage, I actually thought it was a pretty damn good effort might be too dark for you to see. Yeah, I am. There we go. All right. So I thought it was a pretty damn good effort considering what I, what the raw footage was like and how many issues there were. Um, I had to do a lot of color grading, but, you know, the movie was shot m mostly on a Panasonic HVX camcorder, um, and the HVX is a 720p camcorder with P2 cards. You know, it, it's, an, it's a DV camera. It has a lot of issues. So <clears throat> there were serious color grading challenges I just couldn't meet because um, if you graded, if you increased the lows too much, the compression artifacts uh, were actually pretty bad. So what I ended up doing was just pecking away and occasionally sending him copies, you know, samples um, to get his input. 
and it took me over a year uh, of just occasional spare time poking at it to get it working. Um, and by the end, we had a pretty good product. Now, looking back on it today, I still see a lot of things I could have improved. But, but, the important part of it is that I did hammer out something that was a decently watchable movie. It, it wasn't great uh, because the material just wasn't, it wasn't there. I mean, there were just too many issues and you can't fix everything in post. Um, it's just not possible to fix everything in post, especially the audio issues were a problem. <clears throat> I actually think in a lot of cases the video worked out better than the audio because, um, well, mostly the issues with the audio were things like air conditioning or inconsistencies or whatever, background noises that shouldn't have been there that crept in. Um, there was one room that wasn't treated in a house, and it was echoey. And what am I supposed to do? I mean, I can't, I literally cannot fix that. There's no way to take echo back out in a major way. I could, I could mitigate it, but you can't fully fix it. So it was always going to sound echoey as crap. I had a very hard time editing that scene. Anyway, um, the, the point is, guy was a customer. I was into video editing. I was pretty early on in my video editing work. And he came by with a, a longer short film that he was having trouble editing and I helped him out. Um, of course, it, when, when it was finished, it was right around the time of COVID, or right before COVID hit. So by the time he was ready to start submitting it to film festivals or whatever, they were all shut down. We screened it online on YouTube, live streamed it. <clears throat> After a few months, Stephen King, soft copyright, took down the stream. Uh, you know, the whole seven days to delete it or you get a strike thing, so I deleted it. I mean, I didn't have a choice because all the copyrights are assigned to him. And that's why you should make your own story and not buy one off of someone else for a dollar that you then can't distribute. However, um, if any of you guys watching me want a private screening link to it, send me an email, jody at jodyruchon.com. I'll be happy to send you a private link where you can watch it. Um... It, it can't really be shared, but um, for you, my viewers that actually watch this, I, I know there's so few of you, um, and the only the most dedicated will have made it to the end of this video, send me, send me a, an email, and I'll send you a link, and you can watch it. Um, I don't know, maybe one day I can make something else, and I'm, I'm, I kind of hope in the back of my head that I'll be able to do something else with the raw footage that isn't owned by Stephen King, because he doesn't own the raw footage, he owns the final product. But, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, that, that's how I ended up editing a short film for someone else in, instead of just doing computer work all day long. Whoop-de-doo, fun short story. Take care.